songs. I have a harpsichord, and uh, I've been playing keyboard almost as long as I've been playing tipple, but people don't know about it because it never gets recorded, uh, except for the piano, except for the fact that when I did Little Eyes, there just happened to be a lovely grand piano in the uh, in the studio, so I was able to do one of my songs on piano, which I was very happy to do. Uh, sometimes, sometime in the uh, early 1970s, somebody gave me some money as a kind of grant. Uh, it was a kind of grant to uh, do what I wanted with, but for art, to help support my art. And it wasn't a whole lot of money, but it, it seemed like a whole lot of money. Then I think it was only it was $500, but it seemed like a lot of money. In those days, it was a lot of money. And uh, after consulting with my friend Carl, uh, who I was living with at the time, uh, we decided I should get a harpsichord. And so I, what we did was we got a, I got a Zuckerman kit, and, uh, which are, and they're excellent harpsichords once you put them together. And Carl built the harpsichord. And ever since then, I've been playing harpsichord. I actually have more, uh, more keyboard songs than I have tipple songs, uh, especially uh, the last few years when I haven't been playing uh, uh, a string instrument. I've only been playing keyboard for the most part. Uh, what are your future plans? Touring? Will you make an, any new recordings? I have a Pro Tools set up here in my room. I rent a room in New York. At least one album a year, mostly of songs, although the last two albums I made were experimental music. I'd never done that before, and I've written so many songs, I decided I could allow myself uh, not to write songs for for the better part of the year and, and to make a, bunch, make a lot of... Uh, do experimental stuff, sort of cut and paste things on Pro Tools, using Pro Tools, which I had a great fun doing. And uh, so there are two albums of mine on Bandcamp uh, that are experimental, and then there's uh, some other stuff on Bandcamp. Uh, the last time I did a tour was, I think it was a couple of years ago, with Josh Burkett, and he set the whole thing up, and it was very nice of him to do it, and it was fun to do, but, um, I had trouble sleeping and uh, sleeping at different places all the time and uh, spending that much time in a car. I don't really like it. I sort of like sitting in New York, <laughs> sitting here and uh, making things because I'm a painter and I like to just stay put and make things and, you know, and visit friends and whatever like that and occasionally go somewhere. Having said that, however, I do occasionally do shows and... Uh, I don't really I don't really play at shows. I have problems with my hands from the combination of abusing my hands, playing music and not stopping when I should and uh and uh I did house painting prep work for years and that's not really great on your hands. So I only really I only really play when I record stuff just to keep it limited. Uh but what, but but in the last few years I've done several shows uh with other people who've played the played the uh, instrument for me, including the tipple, on some of the old songs, and uh, so that's I like doing that. And right now I'm working with uh, with Jay Pluck, a friend of mine, young guy, he's a, uh, and uh, we're going to be doing some shows in the next year. Uh, not so much a tour, but just shows around the area in New York, maybe something in New Haven. Uh, do you want to share anything else about yourself? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you didn't ask me about my being gay. I don't know if that's... It's, it's relevant only in terms of content in that some of my songs are gay, that somehow I'm not a political activist, and I don't usually sign petitions or go marching around and all that. And so my songs are a way... Uh, to communicate, to uh, uh, contribute to that community. It's like, uh, is, if gay people hide out, then people think there's something wrong with being gay because gay people are hiding out. Because what are they afraid of? Because uh, if they're hiding out, they must be hiding something awful and perverse. And uh, actually they're hiding out because they have to go through all this shit uh, when they come out. <laughs> and they have to deal with. Although I found when I came out, I uh, I didn't really get anything anything negative from anybody. But every once in a while, you know, you're at a place and somebody makes 
a negative comment about gay about those people, gay people, and it's a pain in the ass. But uh, it's a way to um, express that part of myself, my songs, not so much my art. Uh, and it's a way to uh, to be out, as it were, as a gay man. Although everything I do isn't, I try not to. Uh, although I don't want to make an issue of it. I consider being gay being normal, and uh, so I don't want to make an issue of it. I just, I mean, I want to, if I want to talk about, if there's a song about somebody that I, I love, if I write a love song, then I write a love song. And if it's about a guy, I say about a guy, and I don't think twice about it. I don't try to, uh, you know, and although once, every once in a while there'll be a, there'll be a song about a guy and a girl because I get interested in these two characters, but that doesn't happen a lot because... Uh, I think a few other people are writing about guys and girls who like each other. I think I don't really need to do very much of that. Um, but anyway, I want to thank Drag City and everybody for uh, showing interest in this, uh, in this music and my music. I really appreciate it.